the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. Oh, you know, I wanted to, I, I, picking up again where we were, uh, work, reading the uh, chapter of the day for the uh, the Bible. We on, on TikTok, I'm doing one chapter. They're reading it and uh, discussing it. Uh, I, the approach, though, for the Old Testament, because it's, it's huge, it's long, is to uh, cover a week worth of chap, you know, like eight, eight to uh, eight chapters. Uh, and and why it's playing, the audio book is playing, I will, I may at times comment on something. And that may sometimes distract you from hearing, but focus on the reading when you get a chance. Not while you're driving, but while you're reading. But the point is, we want to say that we it could majority of the time you're going to hear what the reading of the scriptures are so that you can get to past that point where people sit there and say they have, uh, uh, to the point you say you have read the Bible. You want to read it over and over again if you can, but you definitely want to be able to read it uh, at least once, you know? Uh, and then you'll see the bigger picture of the Bible, the scriptures, if you do that. Uh, I want to get to the point where start looking at maps and, and regions and where these people actually uh uh, came from. So sometimes, and if I get if I get my uh, audio correct, what I want to do sometimes is to actually uh, insert pictures and maps to give a better picture. Like like, but I won't do it this time around. I didn't do it this time around. Far as the like Eden and so forth, but we can use some of these some of the regions now they're talking about, uh, and inside injecting some of those maps in there so you can take a look at them. Uh, not this 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 first set of eight, but uh, in the future. But that's what I'm saying. So sometimes I'll comment on a, a particular piece if I can, if I think I should, I will. If not, I'll just, let's just hear the word. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God anyway, right? Uh, I just want sometimes if there's some key point, some foreshadowing of Christ, uh, I will bring those up, you know, or introductions of specific characters in the Bible that that will play a role or be linked to the New Testament. I think those things should be brought up, okay? Matter of fact, I may, I may just pause it and do it as well if I can. It just depends on how my uh, uh, audio system works out, okay? All right, well, God bless you. We're going to work on uh, Genesis chapter 37. And like I said, we do 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and maybe 44. Maybe 44. All right. And we, what I like to do is let's put those out on Sundays and on uh, Friday or Saturday for review. So because we we try to break these recordings on Sundays. Amen. All right. That's more of the time that I normally have. Uh, opposed to you know, the rest of the work week. All right, and let's see. I want to man, and one of the things too. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, why is it important for you to to read the uh, scriptures? I was looking at this before going to the uh, chapter. Look at this right here. Lifeway Research said, "How much of the Bible have people personally read?" And, and you can ask the question for yourself: How much you have personally read in the Bible? So this is an opportunity to to move this gap from almost half, over half of the people have not read much of the Bible. Uh, then there's a, then on the left-hand side, you got some half, some 12 percent. So let's let's tackle that and get to the point where you read it more than once. Incorporating your uh, Bible studies and so forth, I think it's worth it. I guarantee you'll love it if you get understand. That way when people are teaching the Bible or discussing the Bible, you, you got something to work with. A lot of cases that we're caught off guard and the enemy, just like the enemy, if the enemy came after Christ concerning the scriptures and tempting him, who, who are we? 
we we'll get tempted as well. So let's 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 bypass that and make sure we do what needs to be done. Because that I think that's critical. Is if we do what the word tells us to do, if we understand the word, then we make a difference. Amen. All right. Judah said, bring her out and have her burned to death. 
as he was being brought up. She sent a message to her father-in-law. By the man who owns me, she said. And she added, You can recognize them, they said. Oh, she is more righteous than I am. Wouldn't give it to my son, she. And he did not sleep with her again. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his wrist and said, This one came out first. But when he threw back his hand, his brother came out, and she said, So this is how you have broken it. And he was named Hebrew. Then his brother, who had the scarlet thread on his wrist, came out, and he was given the name Zero. Hey, man. Hey, look, I was, I was looking, that was interesting. Uh, now we shift to Judah, right? Because Judah is the lineage where Christ came from. And, it, and you saw the, 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 uh, the, the scenario, first of all, most people I didn't catch was he married a Canaanite woman, a uh, Judah did. Uh, and I thought that was, let me see, make sure it was Judah. I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to go back on this here real quick. Uh, yeah, let me see. Judah left his brothers and went to stay with another man. Yep. And he married a Canaanite, a uh, daughter of a Canaanite man. What's significant about that? Canaanite are the people that were, were the children of Israel when they, you know, Exodus, Moses and them. <clears throat> That's the land with, uh, where they would take as the promised land, right? So, so and, and, and being that Cana, the Canaanites, are from the lineage of Ham. And most people consider Ham the uh, father of most of the people in Africa, right? Or even that whole area, people of color. But the whole point is that there were Canaanites that that are a certain daughter of the lineage of Ham, right? So uh, Shem and uh, Ham had bloodlines related, even though they were bloodlines themselves, right? <laughs> Think about it, right? They were cousins. And uh, distant cousins as far as Judah and uh, the Shur, the woman that he he married. So he had children, and you saw he had talking about Ur. That was one of his firstborn. Uh, and he, uh, Tamar, let me see, what did it say where Tamar came from? It doesn't technically tell you where Tamar came from, did it? Let me say it did not. So, but they also believe that Tamar, which was also from the land, she was in Cana. That's where he was living at. So she obviously the daughter of Cana. And, and that's interesting too, because most of the children of Israel, uh, at least Isaac and Jacob, went back to their relatives to marry. And remember Esau, because he married a Moabite woman and an Ishmaelite. Uh, that that was not pleasing in the sight of Isaac. Uh, but nevertheless, apparently Joseph knew he had to go back to their father's house uh, and, and marry somebody. And he brought back Rebecca. And then, but apparently that didn't apply anymore with the rest of the children of Israel. Uh, they They all start marrying um, other tribes and so forth, in this case, Canaanite, which ties them back to that land, if you think about it. Uh, then you saw the dynamics about him, uh, Judah, having a child, the, whose son married uh, uh, Tamar, and then Tamar, then he died, and then next thing you know, we got uh, the other one marrying him. <laughs> Er, and er, er, he, he had a problem sleeping with her, but he didn't want to put his seed in her. So he pulls it out every time. You know, even though we all we want about pre ejaculation, but apparently it was enough that uh, it wouldn't happen. So God, God took him out too, because why? Because the lineage 
the lineage of Christ was to be come, only can come through the from the Judah, his son, uh, with you know, uh, in this case, Tamar, right? So that was interesting. And since he didn't fulfill what he's supposed to do, next thing you know, and then sure, uh, Judah's wife died, which set the stage of him having a need to have a, a wife. Uh, so he called himself relieving himself. So he saw, he thought it was a temple shrine uh, prostitute. And so he paid what the price was to sleep with prostitute. Uh, and found out later that was his daughter-in-law, Tamar. And when she was getting ready to get stolen, because she kept those those items, those pledges, she was able to say, hey, look, the man who, who may impregnated me, uh, he's the one that is also responsible. And when Judah found out it was him, if that's what he said to say, she, she's more righteous than he is because he didn't give her son, his son, to her to marry so that she would bring in the next seed of the lineage of, uh, of Christ because that's the lineage it came from. So I thought it was interesting, big dynamics on it. And, you know, if I would talk like this, I'd probably talk maybe like, uh, maybe not all the chapters. We'll see, though. All right, let's keep going. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.